Hi, I'm Hilary Lane Glandon, and I am a PhD student at the Chesapeake Biological Lab, and I am studying the impact of climate change on blue crab in the Chesapeake Bay. We're trying to understand how blue crab growth and how they make their shells and also their energetics are going to be affected in the warmer and more acidic climate of the future. Um, and we're going to take those data when we're done with the experiments and put them into a model so we can forecast how the crab population is going to look when they're ready to be caught. We know that one of the causes of climate change is the burning of fossil fuels, which warms the air and then therefore will warm the ocean. And we see um, this increase in carbon dioxide means the pH or the acidity of the water goes down. The Chesapeake Bay is the largest estuary in North America and um, it can be used as a model for what's going to happen in other systems. We've seen a really dramatic decrease in the numbers of blue crab over the past 10, 20 years. And so management has tried to sort of adapt to that to help the population recover. We want to try and give managers sort of like a leg up rather than trying to play catch up like we're sort of doing now, is to try and use our data to predict what will happen. Last summer we ran an experiment where we changed the acidity of the water. Um, this summer we're going to run an experiment where we change the temperature and the acidity. So what we're doing is we're going to pump water in from the end of the pier into the Cronin lab. And that water is going to get acidified and heated and then it's going to go into individual tanks that will each contain an individual blue crab. So we're going to have an ambient temperature, so like around 25 degrees, which is sort of your average temperature you see in sort of the average spring summer month in the bay and then we're going to have an elevated temperature which will simulate um, projections for climate in the year 2100 which will be about 31 degrees. To acidify the water we use a system called a pH stat system so it's sort of like your thermostat so you have a set pH that you want it's more acidic than the water that's coming in. In order to make the water acidic we're going to pump CO2 gas into um, the water. So you set your pH to whatever level you want. We have one crab in each tank. I'm working with juvenile crabs. Um, and also we're trying to measure the amount, the growth rate of crabs. Crabs grow by molting, right? So crabs are one size, then they shed their external skin and it essentially immediately become a different size. The way we measure the growth rate is the amount of time in between those molts. We didn't find that they grew a different amount during each molt. That the crabs in the acidified water were growing a bit slower, so they had longer intermolt periods than the crabs in the ambient water. And so this indicates that in a fixed period of time, crabs in an acidic environment may be smaller. Eventually, we're going to reach temperatures in the bay, if emissions scenarios continue the way that they are, where crabs will not overwinter. And so currently in the bay, crabs stop growing when the temperature goes below about 10 degrees Celsius. And that happens in the winter every year. This decrease in growth rate that we may see could be counteracted by growth for 12 months of the year. And so it'll be interesting to see how the waterman community sort of feels about potential changes in um, the way that crabs are managed seasonally. We're hoping that our data will help with that.